With over 8,000 plus graduates, Galvanize and Hack Reactor are leading the industry in data science and software engineering education. In this series, we interview students in depth on their educational journey. This is Decode, my coding bootcamp story. Welcome to Decode, my coding bootcamp story. Today, we are interviewing Akul Agarwal, who graduated from our Hack Reactor Software Engineering Immersive Program. So, let's get started. Akul, what was your background before you came to Hack Reactor, and what inspired you to learn to code? Uh, sure, yeah, I was working as uh, in the aerospace field, uh, had a mechanical engineering degree from college, and uh, I had already had a few years of internship experience in the aerospace field at a different a couple different places and then I worked full time when I graduated. One of the things I saw that uh, caused me to start like learning to code was uh, limitations in my uh, then current field. To get anything up and running, uh, especially in aerospace, it takes millions or sometimes even a billion dollars. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted more opportunity. So I kind of just decided to one day give it a shot. A friend of mine recommended a few textbooks to try and then a few coding challenges. And I ended up liking it. It was it was uh, something I did after hours at a coffee shop, eventually decided, hey, I'm liking this. I'm not getting enough time to do it. Uh, never going to be able to do it at work. Uh, although I did solve a couple of challenges, which I don't think anybody else would have because I, I learned I taught myself, I think it was a little bit of like, Shoot, I can't even remember what the coding language at the time was. But I saw something at work and decided, hey, I like the satisfaction of doing it on my own time and doing it at work. So why not just pursue it full time? So I took the risk, quit my job, and uh, started to uh, just learn full time for a while. And so my motivations, I guess, would be uh, just to increase opportunity and you know see where it would take me. Would you say it was the increased opportunity that made you switch from mechanical engineering to software engineering? Yeah, I think primarily, uh, I look at it two ways. One, it gives you more opportunity to do different things in the same field. So I can more easily switch between coding paradigms, coding languages. Uh, there's a the stack is, is massive all, all the way up from the metal to, to if you're doing like web development, which I currently do. Mm -hmm. And it also allows you to very, if you, if you decide you want to learn and, and really put the work in, you can move up vertically as well really quickly as, as you if you want. It was a bonus for me that I ended up liking it and, uh, you know, continue to enjoy it now. Sure. So going back to your, your university experience, um, how would you say Hack Reactor's program differed from that traditional university experience? <sighs> Much faster. I mean, sh like, what do you guys use that expression, drinking from a fire hose? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was... I, it was definitely beyond my capacity to absorb, but I think they know that because, or you guys know that because, um, you know, I guess everybody has a different capacity for that, for learning. But I think for most people, even one who, those who spend extra time or ambitious, et cetera, uh, or even have a knack for it, it's, it's probably a little too fast, but that's fine because you get the foundations and from there, after the program, I actually spent a month reviewing a lot of it. It's not that I didn't know how to do anything, but some of it wasn't quite embedded enough in my mind or wasn't quite fresh enough so to really get it to sink in. Um, so yeah, I would say Hack Reactor was much faster uh, just in the amount of information and even the hours I had to put in compared to most of my uh, time at uh, school. So I guess touching on that, that point of graduating, um, being in the field for a while now, uh, how important has the alumni network been for you? Career services program has been invaluable. I mean, uh, first, uh, I work with somebody called Asif, who was kind of, I guess, our career counselor. And then I think I worked with a couple other people after that as well. Uh, when I first finished Hack Reactor, and they were immensely helpful. I mean, they're helpful in terms of uh, the practical things like how do you crack, craft a resume, how do you craft a cover letter, or how do you keep track of this and that, how do you keep yourself motivated. Um, but it's not to be undervalued like how much support they uh, they provide 
just in terms of self-confidence and because uh, it's, it's rough because you're coming out of this uh, three-month program and hoping to land very desired job right. in the software community, often in a place like New York, San Francisco, et cetera, where it's extremely competitive. Um, so the good jobs, while they're there, are highly sought after. That was a big part of it that uh, these individuals who I worked with, were, they were really there. Um, and then after that, looking for my second job, I knew on my first job, I knew I didn't want to be there too long. And uh, I guess I delayed reaching out to, the, to you guys for a little bit because I wasn't sure. But as soon as I was sure I wanted to do it, I'm grateful I thought to do that. I'm grateful I remembered that you guys are are very supportive, second, third, et cetera, jobs because I had opportunities far faster than I expected. I mean, in good ones, like solid. Uh, one was eBay. One was the one I ended up t- taking, uh, Avi Networks. I got interviews in no time. Uh, and kind of actually happy that I didn't get time to study because it turned out I didn't need to as much as I thought. Yeah. Kind of a interesting, I guess, experience. Um, so yeah, that's been invaluable. In terms of other students, alumni, I guess I'm one of those cohorts where we kind of, uh, we didn't really stay in touch. Mm-hmm. Um, so, shoot, I can't even remember the last time I talked to one of my alumni peers, but uh, I do remember the first year going to several events where they showed up. Um, so yeah, it's not something I guess I've made much use of recently. Partly it's just life busyness. Oh, of course. I mean, to be frank with you, I'm leaving work at like 9 or 10 p.m. these last few weeks. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I wouldn't mind keeping up with some of them. It's just it hasn't happened. And I don't think I just don't think we have a medium for our group specifically to keep up. And the larger network, um, I do post on the Facebook group here and there. Actually, touching on that aspect of being out of school for a while, having worked a couple jobs in the field. Um, what are the most important skills you've learned as a software engineer? I don't know. I guess better time management. Because uh, I know in Hack Reactor, it was like, get things done now. Otherwise, you won't meet the deliverable because there were very strict time constraints. Um, we had sprints that were, I think, generally every two days. And then a project that lasted two weeks and one lasted four weeks. And I think my first job out of there actually kind of uh, expected the same. Yeah. So that was useful in a, in a way because I, I delivered very, I don't think I missed a single deadline on my first job. Um, but on my second one, things have been a little more slower paced because the company I joined wasn't quite as early startup. Mm-hmm. So I've had to realize that I need to slow down sometimes because I'm missing way too much stuff or I'm making mistakes, which our team has to re- deal with. There's things I can learn that will speed me along or gain me a better understanding, again, if I just take the time. But it's also like knowing when you can and can't do that. If there's a deadline for a critical feature, what can you do? Yeah. Uh, But sometimes you carve time out. I I remember creating at this job, or I guess my job at Avi Networks, I I remember creating um, the CSS grid template thing, which uh, is widely used now by the team. It was just something I did because I wanted to learn it. And then our, our, I took a week to do it. Uh, our manager decided, hey, I want you to do it right. So really just dig into it. He helped me along. And I was surprised to find that that was the one thing out of everything I did for over months and months that my manager really promoted. Like, hey, he, he was able to do this thing and, and, it, and it helped. Um, so sometimes the non-direct deliverable or the thing that's not necessarily like uh, the, the burning fire might be the thing that sometimes helps the most. You never know. Sure. So for all the other software engineers out there that are just getting started their journey of coding, um, do you have any advice for people who are interested in learning to code? I don't know. I, I think I'm somebody who generally cares about the fundamentals a lot. Yeah. So I understand the language you're working, the language, the framework, whatever it is you're working with. Uh, the paradigm, whether it's object oriented or functional, whatever, just understand it well. Learn some of the history behind it. Learn why uh, methods are shaped a certain way. Learn, like if you're studying, for example, you know, uh, going back to JavaScript, if you're learning the object prototype change chain. There's 
four or five ways now to to uh, do object inheritance. Mm-hmm. Learn each one and learn why some have been deprecated or some are still preferred. Uh, learn who the people are in the community who are trusted and and write the quality uh, textbooks or documentation or the video or make the quality videos that you can learn from. You always have plenty of coding projects. You'll always have tons and tons to code, but don't skip the fundamentals. It'll come back to bite you at some point. Uh, another thing is this industry, I think, is a little more forgiving, generally speaking, of um, not necessarily incomplete code, but not as like not the highest quality code because it'll still work. Right. You get it to run. I came from an aerospace background where like every fastener had to be specced out very carefully, every composite joint. I mean, you name it. The desired jobs out there the ones where you're either at a leading company or you're working with a well-known team, whatever, they want the person who understands what they're doing, not somebody who can just kind of bandage it together and figure it out because you can always do that. Um, So in my mind, even, I think the separation between like kind of a technician and engineer or really a hobbyist and engineer uh, is more appropriate, is, is the person who understands how to do it right so it doesn't break and then if needed uh scale it Mm. because anybody can put something together well cool i think that's amazing advice for anybody out there who's just getting started um and i just want to thank you so much for your time today to join us and answer some of these really fantastic questions yeah happy to well you guys have helped a lot if i can do a little bit to give back it's no problem at all that's that's so great to hear well cool thanks again and uh Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. This has been Decode, my coding bootcamp story. If you'd like to know more about our programs, please visit galvanize.com or email us at admissions at galvanize.com.